Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today I'm looking at the 2018 Senate elections 100 years ago. So since we do these every six years for these uh, set of Senate elections, these one third of uh, one third of the seats of the United States Senate, it doesn't exactly go back uh, completely 100 years. In fact, we go two years uh, after 100 years, so 102 years back in 1916 because it is the year 2018. So, at the times, the Democrats did hold the majority, and I'm not going to reveal the number uh, just yet, but they did have the uh, majority, and, I mean, you can see it right over here, so actually, I will show you the numbers now, but what's interesting is the maps. When we look at this, uh, I guess, composition, it doesn't look anything like what we see now. In fact, I can show you the screen of what we have now with Democrats up in the north, Democrats up on the west, compared to what was there in 1916. Uh, a lot more red now all the states that are currently highlighted as light red or gains for the gop but the gop had seats in washington in california in north dakota minnesota wisconsin michigan pennsylvania indiana west virginia maryland new jersey new york vermont massachusetts connecticut and maine the democrats had maine massachusetts rhode island new york um new jersey i believe i didn't mean to uh, yeah okay sorry connecticut uh Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, Washington, and the state of California. So completely a huge flip from before. Uh, yes, there are Democrats in Missouri and Florida and North uh, New Mexico, which really hasn't changed. But uh, looking at the red compared to the blue, definitely a huge change uh, from where it was before. But this really has nothing to do with the regular 2018 election season. It's just very interesting to see these results. So the Democrats were able to take the majority, hold on to the majority with 55 seats uh, to 41 for the GOP. It was a net loss of one seat. Uh, but when we look at another of these races, again, looking in the areas that typically would be going for the Democrats at this point in time, I can pretty much list them off. So they currently, they lost with 55 seats. But if we take the current composition, we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So uh, essentially, that would be giving them a huge majority. So 55 plus 16, 61, then 71. So they would have 71 seats. So I believe the last time there was a around that type of majority was 74 back in 1936 under FDR, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it's just very interesting to see these the same map, the same exact Senate seats up. I believe Arkansas may have been a special election, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Arkansas was a special election. Indiana was a special election, but they also must have held an election that time. Uh, and Maine also had a special election. But yes, Indiana and Maine both held their elections. But Arkansas is not really that... Um, it's, it's not noted here. Uh, but when we, again, look at the states that are, are Republican states now. Utah, Wyoming, Nebraska, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, uh, I guess Arkansas, you could say, uh, and Mississippi and Tennessee which are currently held by GOP incumbents that are, uh, some of them are not running for re-election, such as in Utah, Arizona, and Tennessee, but they currently have GOP, uh, rep I guess, incumbents, uh, and overall majority of representatives from the states themselves. So looking at this map, a lot has changed. But again, I'm not saying this has anything to do with 2018. I just like looking at the data. There weren't any polling. Um, there wasn't any polling. There wasn't any, uh, I guess, calls for uh, political parties in terms of safe blue or safe red. It was just races that people pretty much knew which candidates would win, but it was never published uh, like it is now in the mainstream media with updating elections every single day or something like I would do. Obviously, it wouldn't be possible back then. Um, and also, if we look at the years that these people were elected, 1911 is very, very, very common amongst these senators. If we go back now to look at where they were elected, um, let's go past this. I believe they may, oh, right here. So 2012 is a number you do see recurring a lot, um, but they also have a number of years behind them. One to note is Orrin Hatch. Uh, 1976 was the first time he was being elected. Last time is going to be 2012. So clearly a number of uh, differences there, but also 2012 is a year that we see uh, repeating here, but also years before it, 2006 or 2000, 2006, 2000, 2000, 2006, 2000, 2006, 2000, 1994, 1992. So there were a lot of uh, second term senators if they did win in a number of these state, states. I mean, 1912, 1911, 1911, 1911, 1906. So it did go back 1911, 1911, 1910, 1913, 1911, 1910. 1911, 1908, 1910, 19, I'm not going to keep going on, but still around the same time frame. So it's around what we see now, just uh, a lot more establishment people in the Senate. Uh, times have changed and a number of different candidates, 
there weren't an exact uh, safe, I guess, composition between the GOP and the Democrats because right now if we look at the um, – it wasn't really as balanced as it was before, as it is now, because we have 49 Democrats and 51 Republicans. Uh, but overall, looking at this map, it's very interesting to see how much they have changed. They pretty much have done a completely 180 flip uh, and gone to from Democrat to Republican and Republican to Democrat. Just looking at this map, pretty much the blue went higher and the red went lower. Um, but overall, that's just a rundown of the 2018 Senate elections 100 years ago. Uh, which is pretty interesting. So, in fact, it's actually 102 years ago, um, but making the title of this video wasn't thinking. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.